Python on hardware time. <laughs> we have a newsletter. Sign up for it at adafruitdaily.com. We don't spam. We don't harvest your emails. We don't do any of that. You can unsubscribe at any time. But what it does give you is a once a week newsletter that is the best Python on hardware newsletter out there. So MicroPython 1.0. One six is released. Um, you looked at it. I think the cool feature that everyone's talking about is that like command line thing to control. Like, the stuff. the cool thing about this, yeah, MP1 was cool. Yeah. The cool thing about this is how fast we were able to keep up to date with upstream. So there there's it, there's many reasons for this multi layered like a snake. I think snakes have layers, right? So we Scott did a massive push before he just did. He went on vacation of merging three years worth of MicroPython updates. I think we were on like 109 or 108 or something. We merged up to 115. And uh, Damien, who's the maintainer of upstream MicroPython, was like, I want to do more s smaller, more common releases, more often releases, um, which is good because it means it's actually easier to keep up. It's, it's tougher to merge six months of, of stuff. It's easier to merge like a month of stuff just because there's not as many changes and, and tweaks to do. Um, so the 116 release, we were on 115. 116 came out like a week ago, and within a week, um, Jepler was able to do a PR to catch us up. And this is cool because now, as we're adding stuff to Circuit Python, like Jepler found a cool way to also compress uh, some of the flash by like the way we store objects and like having an extension to the structure, whatever. You know, cool hack. And historically, if we were like six versions behind on MicroPython, the chances of us getting that into upstream is it just gets tougher and tougher because there's so many things that could be like, you know, forked apart. Um, bringing it closer together means that Damien is on the PR and is giving suggestions for how can we add this optimization and then get it upstream quickly, like cherry picked into mainstream, which is something we've wanted to do. We've made many contributions to MicroPython, but they've had to be, it's really been very like surgical how to extract that contribution. Now we can collaborate so much better. So this is really great for MicroPython because they get all of our improvements. Um, we have the three core devs working on it, CircuitPython day in, day out, and they can benefit. And also we can benefit from improvements that the MicroPython team is doing. And I think it's kind of added to a more harmonious co-living situation. I mean, like we've always loved MicroPython, but I think it, they've always been like, hey, we want more of your improvements, but because you're behind, it's harder for us to... It's to only 13 commits off as of yesterday. Which is awesome, so, right? So I'm going to call it. I mean, that's it. So the ports are still separate, right? So like yeah. we support, we don't have like ESP32, for example. We have ESP32S2 and SAMD21, and we have, you know, RP2040 and This is, in a this is why way. we did that, because there, MicroPython, if you want to use that particular chip, use MicroPython for that. We, but the we, core stuff. But we have other yeah. things, like if it has to support USB. You know, yeah, we, like ha that. we have a different, we have a, it's, it's sort of like Linux, right? You can have some people like Debian, and some people like Mint, and some people like Ubuntu, and some people like Slackware, and some people like Gentoo, or Arch, or whatever. And the kernel is the same, but the, the, the stuff around it, how you actually interface with the kernel may be different. But you still want to have all, every distribution ideally is on mainline kernel. And so that's not true all the time. Sometimes um, distributions have split off of the main kernel and they have changes. They don't get the mainstream. And so it's like it, it starts to get a little wobbly where it's like you'll end a distro which is on Linux, you know, three and one's on Linux four and one's on Linux five. Like it, it, can, it can really diverge. So having, having a similar core means even though the packaging is different, the core functionality and improvements can be shared. So this is a really good yeah. thing for the community. Even the people who aren't doing core MicroPython or CircuitPython, I think everyone agrees this is a good so, thing. So I'm going to call it. Call it. I think in the beginning when we were doing like CircuitPython, people were like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? But now, as the cores are so, as they're like only a few commits behind each release and it's getting easier and easier, if you look at what our team is doing, they're supporting open source in the best way. They're adding and contributing. Things are getting added upstream. They're getting cherry picked. They're getting added. We're picking out things. We're adding it. Mm. And then we're also supporting MicroPython financially. So unless I get told different, I think we're the largest public sponsor financially of MicroPython. So this works. Open source can work. And uh, you know, a lot of people are. They'll call something open source. It's not. There's a lot of folks that are doing open source and they say it, it can't work or they stop doing open source, but there is a way to make it work. It just takes a very curious group of people that's dedicated that maybe had some things happen to them in their life. So um, that's what's, <laughs> so there's more in the newsletter, but that's what's, yeah. that's the thing that's really cool about 116. 
It, yes, it's cool that we merged 116, but what's really cool is how fast we merged yeah. 116. So, anyways, congrats uh, the entire team, and I think Scott's in the chat, so give Scott a shout out. Um, Python and Visual Studio, um, there is beta of Python 3.1.0, uh, beta See 3. Python. Check that out. Um, we have a bunch of keyboard stuff, because this is all keyboard all the time for a lot of the things that we're doing. And if you look at the newsletter and you want to get an idea of like where Python and hardware is going, or just electronics, um, look at it quickly and scroll down and then look at the project that you want to do. And it's like, wow, like this is that easy to do now. These are all the different things. So uh, speaking of, this week, my uh, pick of the week from newsletter and Python on hardware. Oh, you pick stuff out? I do, is uh, the latest Hackspace issue. Oh. So this just came out, um, and there's a few things in this issue I wanted to mention. Uh, first up, uh, congrats Simone on the cover Yay, there. Got Simone. some Marginu and uh, Pico. And in the things that are CircuitPython and Python on hardware related this week, Lady Ada, um, first up, there's this little uh, Halloween pumpkin. Yay. This is Sloopy. Spoopy Poopy. Spoopy, spooky Poopy. <laughs> CircuitPython. <laughs> and CircuitPython, it talks when you go near it and everything. And then um, Hackspace, they're fast. And just, like Ben's a really good author. He's the um, editor in chief as well. Ooh, this um, is cutting so edge. This was CircuitPython and MicroPython. This was using the libraries of CircuitPython combining the hardware support of MicroPython. Yeah, so, so this is uh, based off of the work that, of course, Melissa's been doing with Blinka. She's just been rocking it out. Um, Blinka is our compatibility layer that we originally wrote for MicroPython, but like nobody really used it. Um, and so we sort of diverged the code and started focusing more on CPython uh, support. Um, so that you could use our CircuitPython libraries on Linux computers like the Raspberry Pi or the BeagleBone or the Onion Omega or the Banana Pi and also on desktop computers running CPython using like a USB dongle to, to convert USB commands into you know, mm -hmm. GPIO commands. But then when the Pico came out, there were some people who were using MicroPython but wanted to use our libraries and there was like, I, I think people were like, I don't understand why can't I use the CircuitPython libraries on MicroPython? We're like, you can. With Blinka, and people were like, well, it doesn't work. And we're like, oops, it should. And so Melissa went in, uh, cleaned it up, and published how to do it. And we're going to make it even better. It's, it's, a little, it's a little bit unusual how to do it because of the file system stuff. With MicroPython, you have to use their file system manager. Um, but we're going to uh, hopefully make it even easier. Um, again, we would love for MicroPython to have our API. But since they don't, we can do the second best thing, which is offer a shim. Yeah. OK, and that is this week, Python on Hardware News.